Congressman Hakeem Jeffries from New York and Hannah Grosh Bedley, a research fellow for Media Matters. Thanks to you both. Thank you. So great to be here, Congressman. I don't want to get too in the weeds about the rules, but I mean, the rules do matter. I mean, and, it, and the level of sort of disrespect that we saw there was pretty staggering, and particularly considering, you know, I mean, you know him probably better than I do, but Congressman Cummings is not—he's not a man to whom you would see that kind of an outburst particularly frequently, unless he'd really been pushed. Well, he's one of the most decent, gentlemanly individuals in the House of Representatives, well respected on both sides of the aisle. Now, the House rules clearly are, have the principle embedded in them of equal time for both the majority and the minority. Uh, we all represent more than 700,000 individuals. Elijah Cummings is the ranking member, uh, and he should have been granted the opportunity to speak uh, for the same amount of time or an equivalent amount of time that was given uh, or taken by Chairman Issa. But here's the problem, the GOP agenda is very simple. Delay, destroy, defund, and distract. And Daryl Issa is the distractor in chief. Yeah. His job is not very complicated. Manufacture scandal and crisis in order to distract from the failed GOP agenda. And I would add to that, not let the other side get their, get their, have their say in. You know, Hannah, on, um, ISA apologized, and I'm going to put that in air quotes for a reason, on Thursday telling the San Diego Union Tribune that he, quote, I could have offered to reopen the hearing and allowed him to make a second statement. As chairman, I should have been much more sensitive to the mood of what was going on, and I take that responsibility. But then let's take a listen to what he said to Megyn Kelly later on Fox. The fact is that I did things according to the rules, I followed a script, and then Mr. Cummings decided to have uh, quite, quite a hissy fit. You know, I mean, Hannah, that's just ridiculous. For, it has been, I have to say, very disappointing to see members of the, my colleagues in the media give Chairman Issa credit for apologizing when the game that he played, and having been a press secretary, I know this game very well, you tell the folks in your home district, you know, yeah, I probably should have behaved a little better, but what you say publicly on national television, on video, is a very different message that, as the congressman points out, supports that sort of distracting, dividing agenda. Absolutely, Karen. ISA is very good at manipulating the media to help him push his dishonest PR campaigns. ISA knows that he has a safe space at Fox where he can go, he can produce selectively edited emails and transcripts, and he can gin up controversy and manufacture these scandals, and he won't get any pushback, he won't have any hard questions that he has to answer. And Fox loves this because they're the network of scandals at this point, and right. they will let him just continue to push this nonsense because it just helps them out. You know, Congressman, one of the things that struck me is, and I think this is part of why um, Congressman Cummings was being so uh, forceful in wanting to speak. You know, earlier in the summer, we know that ISA withheld information in, in such a way that it would, that what was out there basically supported his theory of events around the IRS. So we've seen a pattern of behavior from Chairman ISA where he'll withhold information to make it look worse for the Democrats. I'm speaking particularly when um, Congressman Cummings was the one who made sure that it was released, that progressive groups were also being uh, investigated, not just conservative groups. And there's been evidence that, you know, perhaps Chairman Issa has had certain meetings with the, uh, you know, and sort of, again, withholding different information. So it's not like Congressman Cummings sort of was making this up out of whole cloth. I mean, when he said, I am tired of this, this is a real pattern that we've seen. Right, and Congressman uh, Cummings has displayed over the last 14 months sort of biblical levels of patience <laughs> yeah, with, you know, with an investigation that is a dead-end inquiry, it's gone nowhere, there's not a scintilla of evidence to support the notion that the IRS targeted conservative groups. As you point out, what the evidence suggests is that the IRS was concerned with conservative groups, progressive groups, other uh, interest groups, perhaps not meeting the qualifications of not-for-profit status. Uh, and it was exploring that in broad brush. Maybe there was some awkwardness that was done, but the reason this is such a manufactured scandal and they continue to pour gasoline uh, on it in order to try and keep it going is because they want to distract the American people from the fact that America wants a raise, a minimum wage increase. The GOP in the House is standing against it. America wants comprehensive immigration reform. The GOP in the House is standing against it. America wants universal pre-K, as the president indicated, in his State of the Union address, the GOP is standing against it on issue after issue. And so all that is left for them is to distract. And Chairman Issa is the chief perpetrator 
of this fraud in the House of Representatives. But hasn't Congressman, hasn't it gone beyond, I mean, I agree with you about the distractions, but it feels like it's gone beyond. It is just rank, just disrespect and disregard. You know, we've seen it hurled against the president time and time again, yelling out in the chamber when he's given, you know, when he's speaking, the way they talk about the president. But in this instance, it just felt like it was just so disrespectful in terms of, and again, as you point out, Congressman Cummings, biblical patience. And so for Chairman Issa to behave that way, I mean, it just suggests sort of, to me, kind of a demeaning of the body itself. Well, absolutely. And that's why a privileged resolution was filed, had the support of, uh, Every member in the House of Representatives, substantial number Demo on the Democratic side, uh, many of whom stood behind Chairwoman Marsha Fudge when she introduced this privileged resolution, yep. laying out the pattern of behavior by the chairman. Of course, the House GOP tabled the resolution. They did not want to deal with it, perhaps expecting that, the, that they felt that the easiest way was for Chairman Issa to apologize in a phone call but then right. publicly distance himself in many ways from the apology. Right. I, I find it incredibly disrespectful and distasteful and, you know, again, not in keeping with, as, as you and the rest of the CBC have pointed out, at least the spirit of the rules of the House, for heaven's sake. All right. Thank you, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries and Hannah Groach-Bedley. Up next.